The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Wrestling to the Max in XT Review. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling to the Max's NXT review for June 14th, 2017. And we are brought to you by the W2Mnet.com. That's right, the place where you go find a lot of great wrestling content, plus a lot more. And trust me, if you love all the content on the website, you'll love going and checking out the W2M Network on wherever you find podcasts. And heck, if you just want to get us and you just say, guys, I just like listening to y'all, I don't want all the rest of it everything else it's okay you just go subscribe to wrestling to the max that'll get you all the content we offer plus if you go rate and review that gives us a leg up and helps us and also helps you because your voice being heard lets other voices hear you as well and plus us so it's a lot of great stuff it's a great community and we appreciate everybody who comes and checks us out every week i am gary vaughn of course your host mr paul leaser hey and Paul, uh, we had a slight issue on the SmackDown Live and 205 Live review shows. We had some hiccups. We are hoping the Skype updates you and I just did will c- conclude those issues not being a part of this one. Uh, <laughs> so Fingers let's just crossed. hope it for yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> second chance, Skype gods. I mean, come on. We sacrificed the lambs digitally. Mm-hmm. Let's hope this works out right, Paul. But yeah, let's get started. We got some NXT to talk about, man. We sure do. And they open the show with uh, Drew McIntyre uh, pretty much squashing Rob Brizen, even though he gets a few shots in here or there. They go about three and a half minutes. I'm ready for Drew to get into something bigger, honestly. Uh, it, this is like biding your time if I've ever seen it. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, hey, this is Drew Galloway. Look how awesome he is. He's great. You know, uh, yeah, there you go. He's great. You know, and I, I know I'm right there with you. I, I love Drew Galloway, um, I, or of course now, Drew McIntyre. I've gotten so used to calling him Galloway off the indie circuit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's the fact that he, we know he's a good wrestler. We really like his work, but yet if you're an NXT fan – you're just kind of sitting there saying, well, he's supposed to be good. He looks good. He's beating no one. There's no storyline. So I cannot wait for that first feud that really matters. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, how long are they going to drag this out, Paul? I mean, do you really feel like they want to wait till a certain point? Is there a situation where we, – because we talk about the mid-card all the time. There's always a few issues with these kind of mid-cards. Yeah, there uh, there certainly is, uh, and the fact that the main event scene is so busy too, uh, I don't know if that makes it hard for them to try to slot them in, or they're just, like you said, simply biding their time, or what they're doing here, uh, but they need to drop them into something soon, even if it's just like the tag team scene or something, like I, I need something of substance to get behind Drew McIntyre more than, well, here's Drew McIntyre, and he's great. And he's killing people, and he's running people over with his big ass feet, and it's awesome. But you know, where's we've had a little bit of substance in his match with Wesley Blake, but it's never been like I need more. You know, I'm ready for more. Mm-hmm. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, they've definitely sold us on the fact that this guy is awesome, right? I mean, mm-hmm. there's no denying that they've proven that. But it's just like you're saying. The substance is going to make him even better. And not only that, I mean, I think the whole point in bringing him back into the WWE in general is not only help some of the guys in NXT, but to give him that extra opportunity, to give him that second chance to make some good runs here, and uh, if not just one solid run. So we'll see. But I, me and you both agree, Drew McIntyre, please get into a substance that it matters, a feud that matters, something that we can hold on to. And, and maybe they're just doing this because this time in NXT is going to be short. But uh, yeah, who, who who really knows at this point? But I, I'm with you. Give me a feud, or just you know an angle, something that that lets me sink my teeth into the character more than just Drew McIntyre murders people. Which don't get me wrong, I love. 
Uh, we get a video package for Alistair Black here, too, where they talk about um, how he's murdering people, which is also a great joy to see. Uh, and then Ember Moon, uh, we get a recap of her angle where she was cleared to wrestle in front of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, and she'll face Peyton Royce next week. And then we move on to this tag team match, the Authors of Pain, squash somebody. It's not even the Authors of Pain. I believe it's Occam who just gets in there and runs these guys over solo while Rezar talks to Paul Ellering on the outside. And then after the match, um, Ellering grabs the microphone, talks about everybody's AOP has beaten, and says heavy machinery don't really match up against all the teams they've beaten. And this brings those big men out. We have a stare down, and Ellering uh, sort of backs AOP down and, and takes him to the back before anything can get out of hand here. <laughs> Okay, so before I jump into that tag match and, and everything that kind of circulates around that, I do want to say quickly, uh, I will talk more about the video packages uh, when we talk more about those later. I'll package them all in one little group right there. So I'll stop and not talk about the, you know, Alistair Black stuff because I love him. Uh, but I, I want to talk about really quickly here about this other recap now i know gary you're throwing yourself under the bus just because you're uh, seeing something that's over and over again but why are they just showing us a recap that was kind of a long recap i thought to myself they couldn't have shot something like three minutes five minutes of you know something else they just had to recap that thing i mean i, I thought that was kind of lazy in my personal opinion mm -hmm. so I, I don't know why they chose to do that i mean Come on, they can do something. They have all the equipment. Let's just, you know, knock out something new. Even if it's just them sitting in the bathroom talking about how much they hate Ember Moon, right? Or whatever. It's not, so. it's not Lucha Underground. They're not shooting anything in the bathroom, buddy. Gosh darn it. That's the best <laughs> place. You know, Lucha proves it week in and week out. That's the best place to shoot a video, and they screw it up. Anyway, uh, so yeah, enough about me on my horse about wasting my time with stuff I've already seen. Um, let's talk about that tag division and, of course, the champions, AOP. I love them. Um, I, I love this in a way because, yes, it's a squash, but it's not your normal squash. It, it's basically saying, you know, one of our guys can beat both these guys, and I don't even have to worry about it. I, I, me and the other, you know, uh, me and Razor can sit outside, chat, and have a good time, talk about where we're going to go eat after this match. And Occam is just just take clearing house. It's no problem. One, two, three. He's the victor. Um, so I love the arrogance. I, I love the the dominance. Uh, everything about that. It makes complete sense, and it makes the squash actually not so boring. Because trust me, Paul, me and you would just say, "This is a minute discussion. Let's move on." Um, but the reason we can drag this out a little bit is because of that fact that we had just one guy dominating. And then the next part, we've got heavy machinery introduced into this. And I, I, me and you both said, we kind of look forward to this. I really do want to see this match, so I'm excited about it. I you know, still have a little few worries because I think AOP is going to win. Uh, that, that's an early prediction, but I think in any situation, I don't. I really don't see Heavy Machinery becoming the champions in their first bout against the Authors of Pain. So mm -hmm. I'm a little bit worried about that. I kind of wish Heavy Machinery was built a little bit more. I, yes, I love them, but I wanted to see them bigger, badder, and stronger uh, before they face AOP. But this is fine. Maybe this is what they're built for, just maybe lose and then come back and have that opportunity later down the line. But um, not a bad thing here. I mean, you kind of see the duck and head back to the locker room for AOP, which kind of makes Heavy Machinery look like there's something right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, yeah. I appreciate all this. Go ahead. No, yeah, for sure. I, I, I really enjoyed this as well. Uh, Paul Ellering, while running him down, obviously didn't compliment him any, but having his boys back down, maybe just because he either didn't want to hurt him or they were more than he thought they were just by looking at him, uh, is an interesting little wrinkle to this. And for sure, you're right. Heavy Machinery probably isn't going to win the belts here just because it's they're still very new to the whole scene. They haven't even gotten out of squashing people yet. So, uh, summer, uh, you know, back to Brooklyn or Brooklyn 3 or whatever they're going to call this show, um, it's, it's still a long way away, right? So we still have some time to build up Heavy Machinery with some more tags and tease this thing out some more unless they're going to burn it before Brooklyn, but I don't see why they wouldn't with the tag division being the way it is right now. So... You know, making these guys look as big and bad as possible to sort of match up with AOP going into that match 
Which will be really interesting because, I mean, they're both big guy teams, so you won't be able to do everything they've gotten used to doing against all these smaller guys. So watching them have to try to adapt will be really interesting as well. Yeah, I think so too. And I won't complain about the match. It's not about the match. It's more about heavy machinery. Like, I, mm-hmm. I love those guys. I love the throwbacks that they are. I mean, God, I feel like I'm back in the 80s every time I see them. Um, but it's just for the fact that, you know, I, I want them to come out looking strong. And you know what? They very much can look strong and lose. Um, so maybe I'm just jumping to some early fears uh, that I might have, but no problem. I think both teams come out of this looking good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on, we get a highlight package of Bobby Roode talking smack to Roderick Strong uh, from last week. So while that's not getting touched on anymore on this show, they still want you to remember it. Sonia Deville gets a video package uh, talking about how you know she's a big fighter, she's from the MMA world, and she's here to beat people up. She has a new catchphrase, seemingly, put your hair up and square up, which I kind of 50-50 on. And um, she's going to be wrestling next week, so that's that should be cool. And then we get to see the Velveteen Dream take on the newly signed Raul Mendoza from the Cruiserweight Classic. And uh, Velveteen Dream pretty much squashes him here in about three and a half minutes as well. I don't think I saw anything new from Velveteen Dream here. Um, but once again, I, I'm still... Until we get more from this guy, I'm still willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what, I'm still interested. Uh, Paul's really nice, and he's given him an opportunity, and that's fine. You know that that's that's his prerogative. Uh, I, I just see nothing in the Velveteen Dream that I care about. I, I just I see him week in, uh, week out, which is two weeks, I think. Uh, and so far, eh, it is oh, okay. Yeah, they're going to give him a victory, whatever. You know, and, and I it, it I want it to be good. Trust me, Paul. I, I just right now at this moment, I. I do not see anything coming out of this good. So let's hope for for this guy that it does end up well, but it is what it is. I, I'm more interested in, in that video package that Sonya had. I, I think that, that was actually good. I, I love the fact, like Alistair Black, and once again, both these superstars in NXT don't have to be on the actual show, don't have to have a match, but the way they build them up through the video packages, the way they kind of sell that they are something to be reckoned with, it's very good. It's inspiring. It also gives people that are really unfamiliar with them a chance to see them. Maybe they're watching NXT for the first time or second time. They can kind of feel like, okay, I know who these people are. So when I see them, I'm ready to go. And they, uh, it's it's very easy to understand. It. And I want them to do more of these on more superstars, right? I, I want to see them. Maybe, heck, maybe do one on the Velveteen Dream. Maybe you can show me through a video package that I should care about him. So, I don't know. I, I kind of like the video packages. I I really enjoyed a lot of them, too. I think um, going back to talk about Aleister Black some, uh, they really make him sound like he's the physical manifestation of something otherworldly because they use the word vessel a lot uh, in that package, talking about him, and the presentation of him obviously has been something otherworldly, but we haven't really seen anything other than just him murdering people, which is great. Um, but th- this is something very much darker than what WWE has usually dealt with because they're, they're, we, we've seen them do demon stuff before, right, with Kane, and, and they've sort of flirted with the ideas with Bray Wyatt here. But this guy, you know, he it can get pretty dark sometimes with him, and I, I, I guess they're going to try to find a way to make that fly on PG television, but I... Um, I love the guy. I think. I mean, Tommy Inns a fantastic wrestler, and Aleister Black looks like it's going to be a really fun gimmick. But can they do? You know, the, 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 there's always a talk, right? Can they do this thing justice on PG television? That's a great question. And, and you know, Paul, when he first was introduced, and you probably remember my exact comment. Uh, it was, I love the character, I love the entrance, I was blown away by the entrance. I really was. I, I love the way they did it, the music is amazing, I have it on my phone now, I got it like two days after it came out. Uh, here's the thing, it was about the fact I said, I, I want to love this guy and I already want to buy his t-shirt, but am I going to be okay buying his t-shirt or some of those symbolisms, those kind of like, you know, demon type things that they're kind of advertising there, kind of like the, just that dark world 
that they kind of advertise through the symbols like that they showed during his entrance. If those are on his T-shirt, and not as old, I can buy it. You know, I, I you know people know if they listen to the show. You know, I am a Christian, and you know, I love wrestling, and I love a lot of things. I love Kane. I love Gangrel. I, it's okay to be a Christian. I love that kind of stuff. But it, it's for the fact of I don't know if I can wear that. And in a PG era, do you want to be sending your kids to school with like you know those type of symbols, that type of stuff? I don't know. I don't know that you'd want to send your kid in a t-shirt to school like that. And, and now you may later on in life when they're like, you know, 15 and they're into like some kind of death metal band. But by that time, they have the right to do that. So the PG thing is more about the kids. And that's the only thing I have a fear of is that. And, and can they get Alistair Black over in a PG era and really make him matter and not make him silly. I think they can. I think the NXT is doing it very well. They're not overdoing the symbolisms. You know, it's not like they have the pentagram, like as his main thing, he's not forcing us to stare at that. It's more about the mystery, right? Mm -hmm. And as long as they keep Alistair Black, a dark mystery, as long as they keep us out of the loop and what this guy is thinking, I think the better where WB screwed up on some of these characters is when they over, Overexpose them, Ray Wyatt. Uh, you know what I mean? Overexposing him screws him up. And, and I think they can hopefully keep this guy in the dark. Now, you did hear in that video package him talk. I wasn't sold that I liked that. I wasn't sold that I really liked him talking in the video package. I want this guy to be so scary and creepy. I don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. Maybe a demon voice. Mm -hmm. For for a lot of this, and, and like I said, they, they obviously can't do so much... Um, of what they did, or of what he did on the independent circuit, simply because um, there's a lot of not so nice messages that uh, WWE wouldn't really want you to hear. So, uh, <laughs> um, hearing him talk is is very fundamental, though, because there are, there's like um, it's like a preacher trying to uh, a televangelist. That's what I'm trying to think of. You know, he's sort of like that kind of character. From the indies, at least, where he's trying to to preach his message and all this stuff, and and being this sort of character still works very well for him because he went from being not very good on the microphone on the indies to being actually pretty good. Um, maybe not one of the best promos you've ever heard, but he can certainly hold his own. And for me, I think it's kind of fundamentally important that he talks early on because you don't want to establish something of people expecting him to be the silent murderer when um, clearly it looks like he's tapped for very large things here in NXT. Uh, down the road, and we sort of get that in this next segment too to kind of move us along a little, uh, where we get highlights of Cassius Ono saving Hideo Itami from last week, and he doesn't want to be a guy who sort of rests on his laurels and rests on his name here in NXT, so Regal makes a match where Aleister Black and Cassius Ono will face off next week, which should just be an absolute barn burner if they get a chance to go out there and, and really put on a show, and I... Uh, I'm really looking forward to this match, uh, but for sure, I think somebody on the other side of this who hasn't been as well developed as Cassius Ono, and, and it's nice to sort of get him a little bit of a spotlight here to try to build a character. Yeah, it is great to get him that spotlight. My fear is, though, is are you really going to have Aleister Black lose that match? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and that, that's the I big problem. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the problem. Tommy's coming in, yeah. Yeah, ex you're exactly right, unless Adeo Tommy intervenes, because... Uh, it, this is going to look terrible on Cassius Ono coming in, facing a guy like Aleister Black, and then for him to lose clean, you're giving people even less of a reason to care about this return of uh, an, an indie superstar that people loved all around the world. And now on NXT, he's just kind of a second fiddle, second thought, because he's very human. He loses matches, mm -hmm. you know? So... They've got to do something, and the only way this is going to be redeemable is if Hideo Itami gets involved and causes Cassius on another loss or basically makes it a disqualification or something like that. So I'm excited about the matchup. I think this matchup could be amazing if we had, you know, Cassius Ono built up better. But it is what it is, you know, and I know they have other plans, and I'm just glad to see them in the ring together, even if it's just for you know, seven minutes in a clean, good match, and then something happens. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this will get a little bit more time than that. This is obviously two big guys, and uh, if, if the match ever gets started, because for all we know, Hideo Tommy could just run out and attack him before this thing ever starts, but something to really look forward to and sink your teeth through that's going to happen next week for sure. 
Um, Ember Moon then gets another video package where they once again say she's going to be wrestling Peyton Royce next week, which is all well and good. And then we get to our main event. The women's championship is on the line as Asuka defends against Nikki Cross and Ruby Riot in a three-way elimination match. Uh, Ruby is the first one eliminated by Nikki Cross, actually. She eats uh, that big uh, neck breaker that she started doing. And then this sort of falls apart from there because Asuka and Nikki Cross end up brawling to the back. They're throwing each other into stuff. They're throwing each other into walls. Um, Nikki Cross even buries Asuka's face inside a cooler full of cold water trying to drown her. And uh, they end up battling back to ringside. They're around the commentary area. They end up fighting up on top of it and then end up falling off of this platform through a whole bunch of tables. I I enjoyed this because, I, I mean, obviously they're, they're building either to Nikki Cross challenging or and trying to move past Ruby Riot now or really trying to make somebody feel like they can go toe-to-toe with, with Asuka, and that's Nikki here, which which I greatly approve of. But the crowd was not into this. This was That was a little disheartening for me. Yeah, this did not feel all that strong mm-hmm. because the crowd's kind of uninterested in it. And I think that they really did do a good job of, you know, really having some back and forth between all three. I don't think that they allowed someone to dominate so much this time. Whereas Asuka, you know, at NXT Chicago really kind of dominated quite a bit. And in this situation, they really gave him all that opportunity. And then, of course, what happened? Of course, Ruby Riot getting injured and all that. And then you have Nikki Cross and Asuka kind of doing their own thing and eventually basically knocking each other out of the mix. So as good as it should have been, and I think it, they, I think the talent involved really didn't do a, a bad job. It's just that it didn't feel big. It didn't feel all that inspiring, and the crowd just kind of didn't care. And I don't know why the crowd didn't care. Um, and, and maybe there is something to that. It's weird because usually the NXT crowd is pretty hot for most things. Uh, but maybe they've kind of ran this to the gambit. Maybe people feel like they've seen this a little too much. I don't know. I don't know either. They did capitalize on this pretty quickly after um, after the, the last takeover there in Chicago. So either they're trying to move things along very quickly because they have the Mae Young Classic coming up and maybe Ruby Riot's going to be in that or something like that and they want to sort of shift focus. Or they're trying to burn through this because they want to do Ember Moon and Asuka at Brooklyn, which I think is a great idea. Uh, either way... This kind of fell a little flat. It should have felt bigger than what it was. It's not to say that anything bad happens in this match. It's, it's as far as that goes. It's it's there's nothing bad. There's nothing good here. And the brawl afterwards, I really enjoyed personally, just because you don't always get to see this with the women uh, on NXT or in the or on the main roster. So uh, I definitely appreciated that for sure. But should have been much more than what it was. Yeah, I agree. I think it really should have been much more as well. And, you know, I I think that they'll do some better things down the line. It's just, you know, sometimes not everything's going to hit. And this is just one of them, you know. And I I like all three competitors. I have nothing bad to say about anybody in this match. I I think they all did their job. I don't think anybody kind of let us down. So it's just one of those things that happens here and there. Right, for sure. Either way, that's our NXT for the week, guys. All righty. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We've had a lot of fun. We, of course, want to let you guys know if you want to check out more of our content, make sure you go subscribe at Wrestling to the Max or at the W2M Network if you love everything over there at W2Mnet.com. Uh, also, don't forget to rate, review. Plus, also, you know, make sure you go and join us on our Facebook page, which is Wrestling to the Max. You can go on there and talk all about everything wrestling. Plus, you know, maybe you can. Uh, ask questions if you have any. Maybe you can disagree with me about some things or agree. It doesn't matter. Just go on there and add yourself to that group. It's a lot of fun. Just want to let everybody know about that. Sometimes we forget to promote that as well. So, All right, guys, we're out of here. Thanks a lot for listening. I am Gary Vaughn. That is Paul Leeser, and we will catch you guys down the road. Have a good one, guys. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts. Plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.